Welcome to People, Places, Planet Pod, the official podcast of the Environmental Law Institute, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization working to ensure a healthy environment, prosperous economies, and vibrant communities founded on the rule of law. Food waste is one of the biggest and most overlooked global environmental challenges. Worldwide, approximately 30% of food is wasted across the supply chain. Food waste contributes to 8% of total greenhouse gases. This is tremendous. If food waste were a country, it would be the third largest emitter after the United States and China. Today we talked to Eslinda Van Dolwood and Vita Broken, co-founders of Upprinting Food based in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Founded in November 2018, Upprinting Food reduces food waste by transforming it into beautiful edible art through 3D printing technology. Thank you, Vita and Eslinda, for joining us today. Um, this is another episode of our Environmental Disruptors podcast. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you guys. You have a really cool innovation that involves technology and food, my favorite things. Um, <laughs> so get, to get started, I wanted to first um, ask you about yourselves. Um, could you both talk about um, where about your passion from, for food and where it comes from? Like my mom? <laughs> wrote me a letter last time and she said like oh you used to bake cookies and all these kinds of stuff and now you have a food company and that's basically how it started <laughs> so we i'm just very interested mainly in sustainability so for me it's more the sustainability aspect of the food waste part we're using in a printing food mm -hmm. uh, i'm really interested in how the food waste is not going to go to waste and i just also really like to make all kinds of new flavors and try and test things. Right, awesome. You're, in, you're just more <laughs> interesting here. <laughs> well, um, I love to cook and actually during my bachelor I started focusing on food design mm -hmm. instead of only uh, industrial designers. Mm -hmm. For that reason I did a minor in food technology in Wageningen also to get more knowledge about the background to food and the scientific part. And as child I was always standing in the kitchen trying new stuff and I still love to do that. So in my uh, leisure I love to experiment with fermenting foods and things like that. And well that's also what I did to come up with this concept, experimenting a lot, trying lots of recipes and in the end well. Now we have a printable food taste. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so you're both also master's students at, is it Eindhoven? University? Yes. Eindhoven. Eindhoven. University of Technology. <laughs> yes. Um, so um, I wanted to wonder, I wanted to ask, um, what attracted you to industrial design? Um, for me, it was the part that there's this combination between um, the creativity and the technology mm -hmm. and also the fact that we have project-based education. So we have projects for real clients and we do a project from the first year on to actually create a product or create a concept or create do a research yeah. depending on what project you're on mm -hmm. and that's for me what really attracted me to the education because it's really yeah it's really hands-on for a university degree yeah, yeah great and next to that you have lots of freedom so for that reason i was able to develop myself in a specific direction and also now during the master track we have the freedom to focus on our company and to really uh, develop this further during the two years of our master great and how did your passions in food and industrial design combine to create up, up printing food um, well, that was after I did the minor in food technology, so I wanted to focus on food sustainability, uh, reducing food waste, and at the same time I wanted to use the new technology, so a combination came by by using the 3D food printer to reduce food waste. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where the project started, actually. Great. And um, I was also wondering, I didn't ask you this before, but how, do you, how did you guys meet? Was it through school? Was it through this project? It was actually during our first, uh, maybe even before, I think before, we were in the Milano committee together, so we organized a trip to Milan, but we oh. really got to know each other better when we were in the first, in your first year, you have a project, and we were in a project group together, and we worked together quite a lot, and we talked about food quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's another project together, together, maybe some courses, and 
actually also besides school we well love to do things we went on a holiday together and stuff like that and we can talk the whole day about <laughs> food and <laughs> we try all new stuff in the supermarket yeah. born out of as linda's design project in her final year of her bachelor's up printing food leverages her passion for food design and technology as master's students both as linda and vita continue to build this innovative company so how does this work they pick up food waste from local grocery stores and combine ingredients along with spices to create unique, delicious recipes. They puree the ingredients and feed it into a 3D printer, which uh, prints the food into beautiful, delicate shapes that are then baked and dehydrated. The end product is a delicious and edible work of art. Okay, um, so now to talk more about upprinting food, how exactly does it work? Um, could you walk me through the process from start to finish, uh, starting from the food waste? Where do you get it? What kind of food waste? Yeah, well, um, currently we pick it up at the local supermarket, so we gather the food, what they normally throw away, and well, we ask them to save it for us, so we have old breads in combination with fruits or vegetables, and that's what we experiment with, so we try to come up with new recipes all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, then we, well, we dry the breads and we make a puree from the fruit and vegetables and we mix it together. Mm -hmm. And afterwards we insert this puree in the, in the printer, in a syringe. And then we can uh, send nice designs from the computer to the printer and that's how the printing process starts. And when the print is finished, then we bake it and dehydrate it to make sure that it's crunchy and has a quite long shelf life mm -hmm. so that it can be saved for a long period and uh, yeah, can be eaten again and implemented nicely in beautiful dishes. Great. Wonderful. And um, before be officially beginning up printing food, you went to uh, the Beijing Design Week. Um, could you talk about your experience there and why you decided to go? Uh, yeah, well, they invited us to come there to present at the Beijing Design Week to, well, show the project. And there we worked together with the 3D food company. Mm -hmm. And there they delivered us with the printers, but they also helped us to set up the whole exposition. And actually, they were very friendly over there. And we organized the dinner together at the Noxo restaurant. Um, so we served 30 people for uh, dishes per person yeah. and was really a quite yeah nice experience and a lot of media attention came by so people wrote their articles about it and well the product was so well received that mm -hmm. we decided to continue together and oh, started okay and it was also really fun being in china with the two of us for three weeks yeah <laughs> that's oh for three weeks we wow ate a lot of lovely food uh -huh. <laughs> we went to see the chinese wall so oh. it was cool and we visited uh, all different kinds that's of local cool. markets yeah. yeah it was really nice <laughs> and what what did people think of your food when they were trying it they actually really enjoyed it. Uh -huh. So in China, they were more interested in the shapes, so the, the really <laughs> nice uh, structures you can make uh, with the 3D printer, and they were really interested in it. Uh -huh. The fact that it's from residual food flows is was more interesting to people. It, it's interesting, they liked it as well, but it's more interesting to the people from the Netherlands or from America or... Oh, okay. It, it's a slight cultural difference, I think. It's maybe it was also quite hard to make it understandable to all. We don't speak the language and no. <laughs> it's more showing the pictures how everything works and what we can do yeah. with it. And next to that, we developed some special flavors for China. Like we printed their red rice instead of old breads and we developed some recipes which, uh, which were more spicy or more sweet. sweet. And oh. Yeah, things like that. Okay, cool. So you, you already kind of talked about how consumers uh, feel about eating food waste. So um, with that, um, do you tell them before or after they try your food if it's food waste? Do you think some people <laughs> might be a little worried well, or anything like that? Sometimes we are on an exhibition and then people just put a food in their mouth and then afterwards they ask, where is what the is piece it? or what is it? Yeah, and then we just explain where it is made from and yeah. well because they already tried it and they like the flavor and they are mostly enthusiastic about it but some people are more interested in the 
process first or they understand that upprinting comes from upcycling so mm -hmm. then they want to know more about that before they see well what's happening yeah and then you still have two kinds of people so then you have the people who are very interested and want to try it and then you also have the people who let their children try it first <laughs> before they try it themselves or their friends um <laughs> and then when they see it's all fine they'll eat it mm -hmm. it's all fine so it's it's very tasty to eat so then everybody eventually likes it most people like it mm -hmm. and there are also people who are just afraid from of the food printer instead of where it's yeah. made from so then oh. they are they look at the machine and i think well is this produced with that kind of thing whereas well it's not quite different from a an industrial process or something right oh yeah because you're showing them in real time like you you yeah, have like yeah. a visual and a printer so they're like whoa what what is going on here <laughs> yeah great uh I, I saw in one of your videos that you even use banana peels in some of your recipes could you talk about <laughs> <Sure>. that <laughs> yeah so um, we can use the banana peels, they're actually pretty nutritious. Mm -hmm. So we cook the banana peels and then we blend them up with the bananas and combine them with the bread and the carrots to make them taste nice. So the, the, it doesn't have a very distinguishable flavor, the peels, it's just... Well, actually, we, I eat myself when I'm making yeah. the banana puree. So the combination of the peel and the banana it just tastes it's nice. like banana, yeah. Only the color is not that attractive. It's a bit grayish black or something <laughs> like this. It turns weird. But yeah. we clean the banana peels well first. Right. So we clean them and then we cook them. And then you can blend it with the bananas. Could you tell me a little bit more about your process for creating recipes? Like, uh, what what's your favorite recipe that you've made with um, the food waste for this? Mm -hmm. I like the sweet one best. Uh -huh. Yeah, most people with the, prefer the sweet one with cinnamon, uh -huh. cinnamon, banana, carrots, and milk bread, mm. um, because they think it's are like cinnamon cookies actually. <laughs> but there are also people who prefer savory ones yeah the spice one. like sort of chips they can snack it the whole evening they say uh -huh. yeah actually last week you tried to make new recipes so then we had uh, purees from different vegetables mm -hmm. uh, from Brussels, Brussels sprouts mm -hmm. and then uh you put and actually, I don't like Brussels sprouts. So yeah, uh, I'm a little worried where the story is going. But continue. And then she put it uh, in different, con yeah, in different containers. And then she added the bread and the flavoring to try uh, which tastes nice. Uh -huh. And then eventually, you can you go to a nice flavor, adding other vegetables as well to make it all taste good. Okay, so you ended up liking the Brussels sprout one in the end. Yeah, yeah, it was nice in the end. It was a combination yeah. of Brussels sprouts with... Um, Broccoli and cauliflower. Yeah, and then with some cumin. Okay. Oh, Which that sounds nice. nice. Cool. Really cool. You still have to test the printing process as well, if, if it is printable, but I think so. It was a nice consistency. Okay. Yeah. Um, could you tell me about um, what makes something printable? Well, yeah, you have to find the right consistency, and yeah. I did lots of experiments for that during my final bachelor uh, project. Mm -hmm. um, I did more than 80 experiments to come up with the right consistency, uh, because you should be able to print it, but next to that it should be crunchy in the end, so uh, after printing and baking it should also have a nice structure. Mm -hmm. And well, that is kind of a hard process, but now we know the uh, composition of what you need and how much starch you need for that and things like that. Yeah. Then it's also not a nice process of trying it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, this, was it more, it wasn't crunchy, like it was squishy or what was it like? Um, it was really tough, so mm, you couldn't really, how do you call it? It wasn't crispy, it was like, you know, Bad when you have the very, very disappointing cookie, which, which has gone still. Uh-huh. Oh, it's like that. <laughs> okay. And, um, and what about with the 3D printer? Like, when you're figuring out the consistency, like, was there times where the printer, like, would print out and it got, like, really gloppy? Or, I, I don't really know 3D printing, but uh, did well, you have any issues with the machine? Got stuck, and that's still sometimes the problem. <laughs> <laughs> then... It, just sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, then it, it blobs up and then you get a, like a big part of monks coming out. 
Well, actually, it is more like the technical problem right now because we make sure that we don't have any large particles in it anymore uh -huh. by sieving it a lot. But oh, okay. Sometimes the printer doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But actually, the problem we also had was the blenders because we had to make a puree which we have to blend. But sometimes the puree is a bit too uh, thick in consistency and mm -hmm. then we broke a couple of blenders. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> now we have an industrial blender yeah. that works better. Oh, that wow. works very nice. Okay, so when, when you're talking about purees, they're actually pretty thick. They're not like a smoothie or anything like that. It's more like, no, like paste? More like dough. Dough, oh, wow. Okay, I can see how a blender would break if you put dough in it. <laughs> Regulatory challenges present barriers to getting up printing food into grocery stores. Like in the United States, Dutch regulations require explicit labeling of all ingredients in consumer goods, making it difficult to sell products made from food waste in the grocery store. However, up printing food has found a unique market opportunity for their technology and services, high end restaurants. Yeah, um, so with your um, 3D printed food, who are, you, who, are, who are you hoping to engage with your product? Uh, we're now focusing on high-end restaurants. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the restaurants um, which are on the higher end of the market and they have some food waste and they can actually want to make a nice experience for their guests. So because they want to create an experience out of it, they can use the residual food flows they have and they can create a paste and a person, we can help them make a personalized design and mm -hmm. have the basic recipes for the paste. And then they can print it in the restaurant, which they actually really want to do. They want mm -hmm. to put it on a trolley and go into the restaurant and show all the guests that they're printing. Oh. And they can implement it in the dishes nicely again. Oh, so wait, they would show they would show the customers in the restaurant the like the 3D yeah. printing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, wow. they think it's a part of the whole experience of eating 3D printed food is seeing the fact that it's being 3D printed. Right. Wow, that'd be really... Oh, so they would bring it out to the guests and be like, oh, this yeah. is... Oh, wow, that's super cool. And could you tell me more about the relationship you'd have with the um, restaurants? Like, um, what type of services would you provide? How would you help them with this whole process? Mm -hmm. Uh, we want to create a design service, so we're working on having a design service where they have the personalized designs, mm -hmm. which makes them really unique and stand out compared to the other restaurants. Mm -hmm. And we also provide uh, a basic recipe, which they can uh, test and then use their own residuals to uh, create the texture, create the right consistency for the puree. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we want to also help them with the printer, explain how it works and everything around, yeah, how to work with the printer. Okay, um, and what are some of the current challenges you're facing with your startup? Um, one is the printer, so we're looking at how to upscale the printer and have uh, multiple nozzles, but also how to provide the printer f to the restaurant mm -hmm. so that they'll enjoy working with the printer and how we will do that. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is the regulations about food, reusing food. That's also, there's very strict regulations on how you package food. So, but that's for the restaurants, it's not very net, not very relevant because mm -hmm. in restaurants they use their own food. So there's no problem with it. Okay. Um, and could you talk about your long-term vision or dreams for up printing food um, what do you think it will be like in five years ten years uh well five years we first want to upskill it so yeah. we hope that in two three years there will be multiple restaurants using this kind of technology mm -hmm. and that they really reduce their own food waste with this and afterwards we want to have a look at well the larger market to well uh, reduce more food waste mm -hmm. to make a larger impact. So uh, have a look at the retail and also the, uh, for example, larger bakeries. And um, well, in the future, um, want to open my own restaurant and use this kind of technologies over there as well. And also, um, yeah, <laughs> doing stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, trying new technologies with food waste and also. 
right. Yeah, that's very important. The the fact that this is sustainable company is very important. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And you, could you tell us more about the type of restaurant you want to open? I remember I asked you before um, if it would be a Dutch restaurant. No. <laughs> yeah. um, did you try Dutch kiss? cuisine it's not that great <laughs> like potato mash or something <laughs> we have potato mash and pancakes but not like the american pancakes we have large pancakes <laughs> pancakes are nice, nice i think sometimes sometimes <laughs> <For dinner>. but, <laughs> well we don't want to make pancakes in our future restaurant <laughs> no <laughs> um, now i think more culinary and that also will fit the printer but next to that um, we want to use new kind of technologies and also traditional technologies like fermenting food. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think it will be quite good in there, but um, yeah. mostly using vegetables uh, instead of meats. And um, what are you thinking of in terms of uprinting food, in terms of expanding, in terms of uh, geographic location, like um, beyond the Netherlands into other oh, parts yeah, of the world? Yeah. <laughs> we would love to be in way more restaurants mm-hmm. and just around the world. We also like to travel a lot, so we would love to visit all the different restaurants. Yes. But for example, we're going to Israel this Wednesday to present oh, wow. the National Food Waste uh, event um, in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. but we love to see all kinds of places and go in all different kinds of uh, countries and, mm-hmm. reach. and discover the cultures over there and what kind of food they eat, what kind of food they throw away, and mm-hmm. how they receive our projects as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, lastly, do you have any advice or words of wisdom for other entrepreneurs who are trying to innovate and make the world more sustainable? Um, well, do it from your passion. Um, do what you really like. Find someone you really like to do it with. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it a bit easier. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and also just ask people for help. That's what we're doing quite a lot. So if we don't know something, we just ask a lot of people and then eventually there will be someone who knows how to do something. So that works very well for us. Yeah, and for the consumers, just try to be very creative with all the food that you still have in your fridge or um, just at home before you're going to do new groceries. You can really create beautiful dishes with it still. Uh Great. Well, thank you both for talking. I know it's the end of the day for you. It's just the beginning of the day for me. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation. I'm so glad I found you online. Um, yeah, I saw you on Forbes. I saw you in Mashable. You're, you're blowing up. And I, I wish you the best for um, the end of your master's program. And of course, the, the future of upprinting food as well. Oh, thank you. It was a really nice interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really nice to talk with you. <laughs> Thank you also to our listeners. Please stay tuned to hear more from startups, businesses, and government who are driving environmental performance. Thank you for tuning in to People, Places, Planet Pod, brought to you by the Environmental Law Institute. We would like to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and ideas to podcast at eli.org. And if you're interested in learning more about our work, attending one of our events, reading our publications, or becoming a member, please visit our website at www.eli.org.